Hello everybody, welcome to number 27. I'm Jack and I've really been looking forward to today because this rather unassuming MGB GT is gonna allow me to prove to you that rather than go for an electric conversion, if you want to modernize your classic, you should opt for a readily available, economical, reliable, powerful, modern engine. In this video, I'm gonna show you how this conversion provides more power and more involvement at a fraction of the cost. Now, Jacob Stad has got a 105 series Alpha GTV, which is sort of a concurrent car to this. And he has hopped it up with a load of Alpha Holix bits, including the two litre twin spark engine from the Alpha 75. Now they do track days together and Jacob wanted to be able to keep up with him, but didn't have that sort of budget. So he opted for a Ford Duratec two litre, which I think is also in the Fiesta STI. This one looks like a pretty good fit in there. I think there's some engine mounts which are custom made and I've got a link to those which I'll put in the video description. And But also he's running a bike carb. So altogether about 170 horsepower on the dyno. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how it compares in terms of price doing this conversion to an electric one. But before, let's take it out and see how it drives. Interestingly, I have driven other cars with more modern engines and one of the downsides tends to be that um, they sound too sanitized and too modern. I think because this is running bike carbs, that's not an issue. It doesn't sound completely out of place. So that is a really, really good start. It is very loud, um, but, um, but that's okay for what is really a play thing. Now, the original MGBs, when they came out in 62, in some ways were quite advanced. So it had a unitary body for the first time. So it wasn't a, a sort of a body shell on a frame. It was fully integrated. It's got double wishbones at the front. In other ways, a bit antiquated. Um, the rear end, having a solid axle, was okay, but it still had leaf springs, which I'm not a massive fan of. Um, the other thing is with the engine, the B-Series, which is a standard in this car, dates back to 1947. So that's really quite an old unit. I think going to a modern engine makes sense. Some other changes made here is that he, uh, Jacob is using, I think it's an MX-5 gearbox. One of the seats has been changed as well and is MX-5. And at the front end, it's got a gas conversion, sort of coilover conversion, but the back is pretty much standard apart from, I think he's got some super flex bushings. Now, normally that would worry me slightly because I think the main problem with these tends to be the back end. So far though, driving it, it feels okay. Now all the mods that have been done to this, I've got a final price for that and a final price for an electric conversion. So we'll be able to do a, a comparison between the two. Now Jacob's obviously gone for a racy setup on this, but you don't need to do that. You can put this engine on uh, and you can have a slightly quieter exhaust. The air intake noise from those carbs though does sound really good. I believe they come from a, a Yamaha R1. So apart from the seat, everything else is pretty standard in here. Um, so you've got the MGB interior, which is all right. And um, the gearbox feels really nice because it is an MX-5 gearbox straight down you know, into the gearbox. You don't get much better than this in terms of uh, shift and feel. Jacob did tell me that um, the front is running a little bit too low, so you get a fair bit of bump steer. The trade-off for that though is that I can even tell at these low speeds, um, we'll get out of the way of this lorry in a minute hopefully, but even at these low speeds, I can tell that the steering feels a little bit special on this car. Now, it's running grippy tires, AD, 048s I think they are, Yokohamas, which are basically track day tyres really, so should have plenty of grip. Right now, is he going left? Please go left. And please go left, this little Hyundai as well. Let's see. Looks like maybe they are both getting out the way. Yes, come on, go, go, go. Brilliant. Let's see how it goes. It's brilliant. 
brilliant. It is brilliant. It is quite extreme the way it's set up at the moment. So that bike, well, that bike, it's not a bike engine, that Duratec with the bike carbs, um, it just feels pretty, you know, it feels pretty hardcore. There's enough, there's enough sort of torque there that you can kind of keep it going and you don't have to concentrate too much, but it's linearly powerful. So it really sort of keeps pulling all the way through right to the top. It revs to 7,200. The front end is a bit disconcerting on this car because on the bumps it is a bit odd and there feels like there's something a little bit loose. But when you're mid-corner it feels lovely and there's so much feel coming through. of Will Woods at the front but he still left the drums at the back which is a weird combination but it feels pretty good on the pedal he was telling me that it's got a strange feel to it but it feels all right to me quite a firm pedal you can feel what's going on so that's pretty good that Ford Duratec just feels manic okay we're in a bit of traffic now so let me tell you how it compares now in terms of a motion and so on I don't care what anyone says an electric car and I've got nothing against them all the conversions but it's not gonna have the same feel as this thing it just it can't you know this still has character it still has a soul and it has plenty of speed as well I mean it's quite a fast little thing so all good on that side in terms of the comparison well you'd have 110 horsepower if you did an standard electric conversion I'm sure you can get them quicker but the ones that I've seen are about 110 horsepower and it would cost you 25 to 30 thousand if you like to potter about maybe not having any sound would appeal to you but just look at the costs Jacob paid just 5,500 for this whole conversion that includes the engine the improvements he's done to the suspension the dyno runs to set it up, the carbs and everything. So it's a fifth, a sixth of the cost. Let's see how it is on the little S here. Steering is nice and direct. Lots of feel coming through. It's fun. I mean, the engine conversion is absolutely spot on as far as I'm concerned um, I think that that's great the chassis itself needs a little bit more development I mean the steering is lovely but it's not consistent and the way it goes down the road isn't fully consistent but then this is still a car in development so can't hold that against Jacob let's do another little pull here let's go MGB I have ever come across. So it tram lines, the chassis isn't fully set up or resolved yet, but as a conversion, as an engine conversion, it is, I think, absolutely ace. Really, really good and for the money. Now the thing is that he could have also opted to tune the original engines, the B series, but it would have cost way, way, way more money and probably still wouldn't have hit the power that he's managed to do just by using a more modern engine. I think this is really genuinely an alternative for the electric conversions. Now you can obviously do it this way and have it as a sort of semi pepped up track car or you can go the other way and keep it more civilized so you can have the best of both worlds and it will cost you less than electric. 
Now, I'm not telling you slamming electric conversions. I think there is absolutely a place for them. But if you are a true enthusiast um, and you like to drive your cars hard, I think you really need to consider going down this route. It's cheaper, it's more involving. I think ultimately it's probably a bit more satisfying than going down the electric car route. So I'm quite surprised that the back end of the car, that solid rear axle still running on leaf springs, actually doesn't feel that bad. And um, that's where I thought the weakness of this car would be. Instead, I think the front end just still needs a bit more work, but the back really doesn't feel too bad. And the way the Duratec develops the power means you don't ever feel like you're going to lose the back end of the car unintentionally. Well, a huge thanks to Jacob for bringing down his MGB. Um, I think that it's a really worthy thing to do. He's, you know, he's still studying, he's on a budget. So this car, you know, has a few little bits of patina and rough edges. Um, but I think it's amazing what he's been able to do. And he's really livened up a car that otherwise just wouldn't be anywhere near as exciting. If you want me to do a video on one of your cars, please get in touch with me and send me a message either on Instagram or on email. Thank you all so much for watching. It's hugely appreciated and see you for the next video.